you struggling to balance your modern life and your faith? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Legacy Dads Podcast with Lance and Dante, offering biblical-based wisdom and that weekly dose of what truly works in men's lives. The Legacy Dads Podcast, real men, authentic faith. Here are your hosts of the Legacy Dads Podcast. They're authentic, transparent, and not always politically correct. Lance and Dante. Hey everyone, um, uh, Dante and Lance here today, and uh, we bring this special discussion for our listeners. Given something is wrong with the world today, and we certainly know what it is, but before we do that, Legacy Dads is your weekly dose of biblical manhood. This podcast is for men, husbands, and fathers in all stages of life, where we promote and advocate proven biblical principles for leaving a lasting legacy. So, Lance, before we get into this thing, you like to have a lot of fun with me via, you know, albeit conspiracy theories. You like to send me, you know, some maps that have been published by the CDC, all this other stuff. So, you know, all of this. And, and you know, I think we have to come back into taking a, a biblical lens, looking at cultural and world matters and coming into what would be proven common sense measures. And I think given your vernacular, your background, um, I would say in preparedness and reaction and proaction, you're pretty good. No, you're the right subject to have for this conversation for our listeners. Well, I'm telling you, yeah, it's the end of the world. So, uh, you know, you might as well (laughs) know. Hey, listeners, that was for me, (laughs) not for you. (laughs) No. uh, So, uh, yeah, so for the listeners out there who don't know, so my uh, my background, so I've got a, I've got a bachelor's degree in emergency management and homeland security. I've got a bunch of FEMA certifications, and you know we study this stuff. And then my master's degree is in uh, that I'm working on right now. A few classes away is in uh, epidemiology or infectious disease outbreak. So this is like I'm like a kid in a candy shop with all this stuff going on because this is my my uh, my you know my comfort zone, if you will. Um, so I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to talk, you know, I'll talk from, from that level, from an emergency management, from a, uh, you know, FEMA, CDC infectious disease outbreak. I'll kind of give that, you know, again, I'm not, not an expert in all that area, but I'll give you kind of the, you know, what I see from that lens and also give some personal aspects on this. But what we really want to talk about with you guys too, is just talking about, you know, family emergency preparedness and ensuring that, you know, with all this stuff going on, again, we don't want to cause people to panic or, or, you know, or look at doom and gloom, but just, you know, a, a practical way and saying, Hey, maybe I need to think about this stuff ahead of time, not wait until the last minute. You know, Dante and I was, I was telling you, one of the analogies I use all the time is like insurance. You know, I've got car insurance, I've got health insurance, I got life insurance. Now I'm hoping I never have to use that stuff. I haven't been in an accident in years and years and years, you know, knock on wood. Um, but I still have you know, insurance on my car because in case something happens. So I look at that as, as being prepared, um, you know, for your family, when you're, when it comes down to your family, having stuff on hand to, to be prepared is just an insurance policy. I'm hoping I never have to use that stuff, but if I do, it's there and I'm, I'm looking out for my family. And I love what you said, Dante, too, about we really need to look at this through a biblical lens. There's a lot of messaging coming out. Um, you know, from the media, people blasting stuff on social media and, and, you know, uh, things floating around. So you have to be very careful of, of where you're getting your information from. Um, uh, but I'm, I love what you said, Dante, and, and I'll turn it back over to you on that. But how do we, you know, let's look at this also from a biblical lens and not overreact or, or cause panic. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I want to use a reference and, you know, scholars, I, I just don't want you give me a little bit of license to use it to practicality. And it's in James, you know, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. And and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we have so many outward interferences. I mean, in a, in a moment's notice, in a click of a button, you can get any kind of news that you want that immediately political or or, you know, news wise or anything else like that can immediately drive up your anxiety, your frustrations, your angers, your insecurities. And, you know, you can go to the, and I want to point our listeners to, you know, we're talking specifically COVID virus here, uh, uh, the coronavirus. Um, But you can go to the CDC website 
You can go to John Hopkins University. Uh, later in this podcast, I will give you um, some other uh, websites. We'll put it on on the, the the podcast for links that you can go to reliable sources. But I mean, worldwide infections, you know, over or this morning was over 121,000 cases reported that we know about. And I believe the number is close to 4,000 deaths. I haven't looked at it. But, you know, you put that in comparison to the various forms of influenza and this is like a little bump on the on the the scheme of things there are some legitimate concerns you know as far as the pathogen information you know just to give a a couple points here for you guys the reproductive number is 3.28 um, this is an indicator of trans of transmissibility so it means so one person infects 3.28 others. So yeah. if the if the reproductive number is less than one, then the transmission is likely to die out. If it's greater than the one, the number of infected is likely to increase. Yeah. A super spreader is someone who passes the disease to at least eight people. So very common with MERS, SARS, the, the, uh, the mortality or the death rate is 3%. Still pretty low because in comparison, SARS was 10% and MERS was about 34%. Judging from past outbreaks, speaking of those two MERS and um, SARS, we are probably still at the beginning of this outbreak. This is about a week old information. The epidemic is doubling every 6.4 days. uh, Morbidity or the infection rate is high, much higher than SARS and MERS. The virus has been found in stool samples. So think public and home toilets. The viral load seems to peak in five to six days. So, you know, within incubation period, you know, in six days uh, to 14 days, you'll know whether you're coming down with that. And so if your nose is runny, you're typically not um, coronavirus. It's a common cold spread through droplet transmission. So sneezing, coughing, fomites, touching contaminated objects and touching eyes, nose, mouth. And these are little things to, to keep an eye on. And meet, median age for these cases in China, most of the ages were t- between 49 and 56 years old. Most most cases are mild. Um, and then, the, as I said, the incubation period is 1 to 14 days, with the average being about 5.2 days. And last in environment up to 9 days, average 4 to 5 days. Wow. So Look at you. That- Look at you with all your morbidity and uh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. But these are some facts that are directly, you know, from higher sources, much smarter than I'll ever be, (laughs) Um, you know, but university, CDC, and like folks, when, when we're talking to you here today, like Lance says, you know, this is his backyard. This is stuff that he's studying. This is stuff that he's well versed in. And so so that's. So I'll tell you that I want to, I just want to touch on something you said, Dante, because I think it's, it's really important. So for instance, here, I'll give you right now, uh, me, I am, uh, I am, uh, let's see, what am I on? I'm on day 12 out of coming out of Africa. Okay. So no symptoms. Now it's funny because when you hear Africa, but most people think, oh, wow, that's not a good place to be. Well, statistically, if you look at just the statistics, I was safer in Africa. There was more confirmed cases in the United States than there was in the country I was in Africa. So I actually would have been safer in Africa. But um, yeah, so again, I'm I'm 12 days out of Africa, but I came to the United States. I have a higher chance of catching this in the United States than I did in Africa. Um, the one thing you hit on Dante, and I'll, I'll just bring this up because that's, that's where this is different than, um, than, than I would say different than MERS. SARS was kind of high as well because the, the spread rate, the contagion rate is much higher. And that's what's causing, I think, more people to get worried about this is because you said it's 2.2.4. I think it was, was the, the, uh, the, the infection rate. Um, that's what's causing this to spread is because it's spreading a lot faster than something like a SARS or a MERS would. Now, like you said, Dante, again, we have to, you have to look at statistically, um, the, the number of people dying of this is very, very, very low, uh, compared to something like the flu or pneumonia or something like that. And again, people being affected tend to be older people, uh, who are, are, um, you know, not in, in peak health or they have a, um, they're, they already have a degraded, uh, degraded, uh, immune system, um, so those are things to look at. Now, now we talked about this Dante before we went live too. That doesn't mean if you're a 30 year old with some sort of uh, immune deficiency, you might you might still contract the virus. 
but chances are your body will be able to fight that off uh, like it would a normal flu or, or a cold or anything else you get. And, you know, I said this, I think we talked, Dante, I talked two weeks ago with you. And, you know, at that point I said, just wait, every state in the U.S. is going to have this within a week or two. Um, yep. And I think that's where we're going. Now, the, the question is, yes, and chances are, if you're listening to this podcast right now, the, the virus is where you are. Now, the chan- Now, what it is, is is, is your body going to react to that? Um, um, are you going to come down with symptoms or is your body just going to fight it off? Uh, so those are the things you need to look at. And that's the, the biggest scare, like you said, Dante, is because it spreads so quickly. That's why we're seeing um, you know, the level of outbreaks that we are at this point. Does that make sense? Yeah. And sidebar note, you know, one of the things that I've been doing over this last week, you know, especially as we see this thing get more and more glorified in the news and the doom and gloom, you you go to the CDC website, 4,000 deaths, but then you look over to the right, that's highlighted in red, but to the right highlighted in green is 66,000 have already recovered. And so we're not putting that in comparison. And I don't want to minimize this is very serious, you know, and it was. I think the ratio of Lance was three point two eight. Three point two eight. Okay. So, but it does spread. It, it, it's very uh, contagious, and and the idea is if you're not mitigating the risk, i.e., you know, we heard a press conference today from our president that as of Friday, canceling flights in from Europe, you know, Italy is in full lockdown, and a lot of people you're reading on Facebook, you know, he said, she's said through an aunt's uncle's brother or sister who works at the CDC and such that, you know, this is doom and gloom and prepare yourself now for Armageddon. The end of the world is before us. But let, let's pull things back here. OK, number one, foreign dignitaries, kings, rulers come to the United States because they like a capitalist society where you get the best of the best and you have preparedness for um, hospitals and you have the ability to treat. When you go to socialized countries, socialism, whether you want to say democratic socialism, social communism, I don't care what you call it, they do not have the preparedness for these kind of outbreaks. Yeah, and, and, and no, I was just going to say, Dante, and that's something you know we were talking about. One of the, one of the one of the faults that happened with Italy and and the Italian government is starting to say this now, is that when it when it comes to any any type of outbreak like this, um, really it comes down to one what we call surveillance measures. So you're monitoring to see, okay, um, are we having more confirmed cases? Is there an uptick in cases? If there is, then you need to. If you the, the second you see your surveillance, you know, um, you start to see an uptick in cases, then you need to look at how do we contain this and control this um, the the virus spread. And that's something that the Italian government said is that the hospitals there um, were not prepared uh, for proper surveillance and and quarantine procedures, and they actually the hospitals themselves in Italy actually probably cause more spread of the virus um, just through faulty medicine and and not being prepared with surveillance and quarantine measures. Um, so those are things you need to think about as well. And again, again, like you're saying, Dante, in the United States, we do have people that are uh, a lot better trained on on how to do surveillance and quarantine. Once you see these uptakes, and we're seeing that is as soon as you know cases are reported, people are being uh, put into quarantine or, or being uh, treated in that sense. So uh, you know, I what, could we have you know could we have something like like what's going on in Italy possibly? But I think our health systems are much more advanced and uh and, and our quarantine and surveillance measures are a lot better than they are than uh some of the countries like Italy. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh yeah, spot on. And I, I think in in putting things of okay, I can react or I can overreact. I can make a decision based on fear or I can make an informed decision. So based on that premise, Lance, and, and your experience and in many different trainings around the world, what are some common practices Especially now, as I'm sure those of you that look at, you know, daily news feeds, daily mail, you're looking on Facebook and all social media of like just uh, aisles and aisles and aisles of emptiness of toilet paper, of children's Tylenol, of a run on every basic need that people are just sure full out panic right now that it's gone to the point of almost overboard. Yeah. And I think that's, so uh, let me, I'm going to back up and I'll tell you a story about how I got, uh, what, what really got me thinking about this. And, and I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go full prepper mode on you and tell you, you know, you need a bunker with uh, five years supply and, you know, solar and water and all that. Uh, we're just talking basic, you know, take care of your family stuff. So 
uh, I want to say maybe about 10 years ago, I lived in a, uh, I lived in a part in, in a gated, nice gated community in uh, the Pacific Northwest, but we were a little bit rural. We were a little bit outside of the main urban area. And what happened was we had an ice storm and then that ice uh, on top of ice, we got snow on top of that. So we had a lot of power outages. Well, because of just the, the, where we were and uh, you know, the, the pecking order of getting electricity. I mean, you had an entire state that was almost out of power. We ended up going uh, seven days without uh, any power to our home. And so when, when you, when people hear that, they think of, oh, like, you know, when the lights go out and there's an electrical storm and, you know, most people think of, yeah, it comes back on in, in, you know, 20 minutes or an hour. Yeah, or no problem. No inconvenience. But so I want to just, just to frame this for you. And again, not doom and gloom, just understand this. So when, when you're talking seven days without power, you're saying you've got no electricity. Chances are your water supply, if it's on uh, some sort of electric, uh, you know, pump or whatever you have bringing your water in, you're, you may not have water supply. So you may not have uh, sewage. Uh, you may not be able to flush your toilets during that time. Obviously, all your electricity is out. Now, if you, if you have an electric, uh, stove or oven, if you're not on gas, that means you have no way to cook. So now you have, you know, uh, you have no power, no heat. Uh, so this was the dead of winter in an ice storm. Um, and we had no heat in the house. And then, you know, uh, luckily we had gas in our house. So we were able to, to, uh, cook on the stove, but these are just some things you need to think about. So basically you've got, you know, and I tell people when we, when we talk about preparedness, go shut off the main breaker on your, on your house for the weekend and then figure out, okay, how would we do this if we had no power? Now, again, we're talking, you know, COVID-19 coronavirus here, you're not going to lose your power and all that type of stuff. Um, but this situation got me thinking back then, like, okay, if I'm seven, if I have to, if I have to, you know, hole up in my house for seven days and survive, what are some just basic necessities I need to have on hand? Um, to, to, to deal with this, if this ever happened again. So that's what really got me thinking like, all right, you know, this is, and again, I had, my kids were younger at the time, um, you know, and it's like, all right, we, we had to have stuff. And, and what we saw right away was, um, again, gas pumps, no electricity, no gas. So, uh, a lot of, uh, gas stations, you could not go get fuel for your cars. You couldn't get fuel for generators. Um, again, people started making run on if the stores were on a generator and did have power, people were going in and cleaning out the shelves, kind of like what we see with COVID-19. But this was a situation that, that we found ourselves in. And after seven days of this, I, I, I came up with some, okay, here's just some practical, um, you know, steps and things to take to, to prepare for the family. And, and Dante, I would say the biggest for thing we can get into is – go ahead. So I was going to say for argument, let, let's just say – I mean we're looking at incubation period. We're looking maybe offices are closing right now. Let, let's just say – let's expand that versus seven days to two to three weeks for the listeners. Okay. And, and so what I, the biggest thing and the point I'm trying to make with this is you don't, don't wait until something happens like this to start planning ahead and start thinking about your family right. and, and what do you do? You want to think about this ahead of time. Now, uh, now FEMA will tell you just in a broad sense, you're supposed to always have 72 hours worth of food, water, you know, uh, supplies on hand. Uh, but we know just from recent studies that very few percentage of that, most people, um, you know, they've got maybe a week's worth of food in their, in their pantry or in their fridge and that's it. So, you know, I, I think that's what, one of the things you need to think about is, you know, let's, maybe I need to be a little bit prepared ahead of time, um, and have some stuff in store before we start seeing the, the shelves getting empty and things like that. And these are things, just practical things. Like I'm saying, you know, if, if you go grocery shopping or, or you have a Costco or a Sam's Club membership or something like that, okay, uh, you know, grab an extra big roll of toilet paper and, and put that stuff in the garage or put that in storage somewhere and just leave it and don't touch it. And it's there if you need it. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you can get into the food stuff. Uh, there's, there's freeze dried food. You know, we've got, we've got probably a month's supply of some freeze dried food that I just, uh, throw in. I, I bought it at one point. I throw it in the garage. It's sitting there and we've got it in case we need it. Um, you know, also uh, water again, you know, with, with COVID-19, we're not worrying about, uh, you know, hopefully we're not going to lose water anytime soon, but you know, a couple cases of bottled water, throw them in the garage, throw them in a storage place, and they just sit there until you might need them. Um, you know, these are things to think about. And I think the big one that we're seeing with, with the COVID-19 stuff, again, what I'm seeing right here, and you could talk about where you're at, Dante, I'm seeing people, people making run on the stores, obviously things like Clorox wipes, 
um, hand sanitizer, all that stuff is gone. Um, so here's a little tip for the, you know, for those of you that, uh, maybe forgot about this Clorox wipes is just simply bleach. So if you can find yourself a jug of bleach or you've got still got a jug of bleach under the sink or in the, uh, uh, in the washroom, you know, just take a couple, you know, capfuls of bleach, dilute that, you know, with, with some water and, uh, you know, and, and take a rag and you've got yourself a Clorox wipe there essentially, uh, for, for one tenth of the, the cost. Um, but you know, stuff, stuff like that is, is what you're seeing right now is people are making a run on the stores for getting this type of stuff. Um, so again, it's just thinking ahead of time. Okay. What, you know, what are some things that I need? I, I will, I will talk about, you know, the mask thing. Um, so what I saw a lot of, and again, I saw this one over in Africa and I saw this in Europe as well. What a lot of people were wearing the uh, surgical masks, which the, uh, the surgical masks that you see do not keep you from getting the virus in one little bit. Uh, those surgical masks that uh, a lot of people are wearing, they keep you from spreading uh, sickness if you are sick or you have the flu, but they do not keep you from getting it. Really, the only thing you can is, is a uh, it's called an N95 respiratory mask. Um, they do make ones their masks that look like that, and they have a little uh, you'll see a little round disc on it that's that's actually uh, signifies it's an N95 mask. Those will actually keep you from getting um, you know viruses or any infection. But what I saw most people wearing didn't they didn't do anything for them at all. And again. It goes back to what you're saying, Dante, just misinformation and, and, you know, people believing what they're seeing on social media and stuff like that. Um, but does, does that make sense to you? And, and, and that's a little broad brush stroke. We can get a little bit more in depth in it, but I know, you know, you had a personal experience, something with your wife. Do you want to kind of talk a little bit about that? And this again, get getting into preparedness and thinking about what are some things that, you know, like if, if I'm with my family right now, if we have to hold up in the house for the next two to three weeks, what are some things that we need? Um, do you mm-hmm. want to talk a little bit about what happened, the situation with Kate? Yeah. And so Kate gets a, a text and an email from her college friend that she roomed with and uh, basically said, Hey, I've got two young children. I'm trying to find um, children's Tylenol and a set of, uh, I always say that wrong, but children's Tylenol and uh, wasn't able to get it, you know, through the local grocery stores, through the local pharmacies, through those places that, you know, deliver to you, they shop for you, all sold out and asked, can you find some place in the Midwest? My wife and I, you know, we have teenagers not really in the need for that, said, sure, no problem. And starts going to the local drug stores, goes to the local, you know, uh, grocery stores, goes to some of the big box stores and then calls and was shocked as far as the amount of run of unavailability. And so to Lance, you know, asking me, you know, I'm 35 miles outside of a major city of Chicago you know, basic needs that you have to ask yourself, you know, okay, for me, Lance, you asked is keep your car, you know, half tank, you know, fuel, like what you said, exactly. I love that. If the electricity is not working, you don't have gas. And so then stock up on non-perishable items, laundry detergent, bathroom cleaners, you know, plenty of tissue, a hand sanitizer and soap and Lance, thank you for sharing that, you know, <laughs> you know rubbing alcohol and aloe vera, you can Google and, and do internet, you know, a way to make your own uh, hand sanitizer through those um, extra prescription drugs, just to make sure you have a six month or a year, year's worth of prescriptions on if you need them, uh, medications to minimize the symptoms and then gloves, mask, and don't forget glasses. I, I find it very humorous when I'm walking in public places and I see people that are wearing masks, but yet their eyes are wide open and they have no glassware protection from the spread of a virus. And the other thing too is a thermometer or bleach wipes or is like uh, Lance just said to, to make sure that you, you have ability to make something that is that way. Yeah. And, and, and that's what we're talking about, Dante, is honestly like, so what I did after my experience uh, in the ice storm 10 years ago is I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make a shelf on the garage, you know, a, a big shelf on the garage. That's going to be where we're going to put all the stuff we need. And so some of the stuff I got, I got uh, again. So in that situation, I had no heat. So I bought this thing. It's called a, a Mr. Buddy heater. It's a little propane heater. Um, that you can run off those little, you know, the, your, your little green uh, propane. Or if you've got, most of us have got, you know, a grill outside, 
you can buy an attachment where your big propane uh, tank you've got on your grill, you can hook that thing up and it'll provide, uh, you know, it'll provide heat. Um, other stuff like that. I think you're, you're spot on there, Dante. Uh, getting some, getting some canned foods. If you want to get the freeze dried stuff, uh, that has like a 25 year shelf life. There's, you know, Mountain House and all the different brands out there. I mean, you could literally go and, and a lot of times some of the big box stores and, and Costco and stuff will have a, uh, a sale on these where you can get, uh, you know, a 30 day, uh, supply of freeze dried food. It goes in a canister and you just throw that thing on the shelf and it's there. Like I said, it's an insurance policy. We're not prepping for the doomsday apocalypse or anything, but, uh, it, it just sits on the shelf until you need it. Uh, obviously things like, like you said, now what I would say is, after we we've gone through uh, COVID nineteen now, yeah, grab a three pack of wipes, uh, throw it on the shelf uh, along with some maybe some uh, N ninety five masks or something like that. And then I think what you said, Dante, is really key. How how much does it cost to just go buy an extra children's Tylenol, uh, buy an extra whatever your medications you need? If you need uh, some painkillers, if you've got um, you know just basic stuff to take care of uh, uh, cold and flu and things like that, some Dayquil, Nyquil, whatever it is, grab a couple extra of those, throw them on a shelf, and don't touch them, and they sit there until there comes a time that you may need that stuff. Um, again, other stuff I did, you know, just batteries, um, you know, uh, flashlights. Um, anything that I could think of, uh, we've got, I've got two big hand sanitizers, uh, that I bought ahead of time because I figured, okay, that's probably a good thing to have. Now, you know, I'm not paying $400 on Amazon for a bottle of hand sanitizer because I thought ahead of time. And I'll I'd, sell you a bottle. Yeah, two- exactly. <laughs> I, I made a joke at work today. I had Clorox wipes in there and I said, I'm selling these for $5 a sheet if anybody wants them, you know? Um, that's great. That's no, but awesome. it, it, it's, it's just simple. Stuff. And again, you know, I'm not, don't, we're not going to doomsday preppers or anything, but Hey, just buy the next time you go to the store, buy an extra of whatever you need that you use and put it on the shelf. And that way, if something like this happens, you've got the stuff there and it's ready for you. Does that make sense to you, Dante? Yeah. yeah. And I, I think it goes back to stewardship is being a good steward of the resources that you've been given. So the way that I like to do it, you know, you make fun when you have a little baby, you got to child proof the house. Okay. So wh- what's the way to child proof the house? You get down on your knees, you get to that baby level and you walk around. Okay. If this falls on me or this dresser is not fastened, you know, you look at all these things that could hurt me, you know, well now here's a situation where, okay, uh, my office building or your office building or your place of work or your kid's university or, or all of these things are not, you know, all of a sudden becoming fear. But a reality is people are taking precautionary measures, you know, and, and whether we think they're re- overreacting or not, we don't know what's being communicated to them from a, an official standpoint. But let's just assume that everybody wants to stop a massive spreading from a countrywide basis based on what we're seeing in in Europe, based on what we're seeing in Italy. So the hardest part about people that have complete freedom is giving that freedom up to realize that it's a short-term fix to make a long-term thing better. And so as we're saying in this is, okay, if you're late, if you're the sluggard, you didn't see this coming, don't panic, don't overreact, don't do something that's going to put you in poverty come to reason, talk to people at your church, talk to some other people that you're looking for. Don't go over excessively because remember, we we are still rational minds. You're still believers. You can go on to your church community and there's going to be communities out there, regardless of self-interest or or self-protection, that ultimately are going to do right by their neighbor, by their brother, by their sister. And so don't jump to like, I've got to spend like Lance said, $400 for a bottle that I don't need. And, and, you know, in three or four or five weeks from now, you're going to be like, why did I just waste, you know, part of my paycheck for that? Yeah. yeah. But what we're saying here, you know, this is something to take into seriousness and you can go to the full extreme, the full Monty and get onto these survival, you know, websites and high military level guys that train high military uh, operatives and, and, and go off grid like Lance, <laughs> and and he likes to play into my my conspiracy theories and my fears and you know all this other stuff of why I need to move to Idaho tomorrow, and uh, he's making a better case for that tonight. But the reality of it is is okay. Take a breath, turn off the news, open your Bible, you know, look at what you have on stock, and and I love Lance like what you're saying. Okay. We lost power for seven days. 
what were some of the necessities we need? Depending on where you live, you know, if you're in Hawaii, is a lot different conversation than if you're in like a, a tundra or a place that is just constantly covered in snow. Yeah. So you, you need to just sit there and say, okay, breathe for a moment, turn off the lights, turn off the power. What are the necessities that we need to have as a family, as a husband and wife, as a husband with teenagers, as a husband with young kids? What are some of the things that are going to calm people down? So if it's, you know, we don't have our tablets, we don't have electricity to, you know, charge the things. What about some good books that my kids like to read? You know, get some good books, flashlights. Well, I need to be able to read these things. Okay. Candles, little things like that. And just sit there and say, what does my family need today? And how do I extend that out for another week or two weeks? Does that make sense? Lance? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, you, you're talking a lot of the stuff. So when we were without power for 10 days, uh, that was a lot of, we had, we had all the neighbor kid, you know, neighborhood kids over at our house. Uh, we had, uh, these, you know, they're, they make the little solar powered lights and candles and stuff like that. And, and that's what we did. We broke out the board games and, you know, just had, you know, had some fun playing board games and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you got a case of ramen, uh, you make, Hey, guess what? Guess for lunch, everybody, everybody's having ramen. You know, we fed kids around the neighborhood and things like that or macaroni and cheese or, or whatever it is. Um, and you make the best of the situation. And, and I think that's what we're talking about here, Dante. I love what you said. Um, about the community thing, and I, I w- I'll bring this up because I'm, I, I, w- I want to get you into the discussion on this. I'm kind of torn on this issue because I've seen some churches and some people recommending now, okay, don't go into large public areas, which would mean obviously not going to church on Sunday. Um, uh, what What are your thoughts on that, and what do we, you know, wh- what do we, what do you think we should take in measures of? Uh, do we go worship? Do we do we stay home because of a spread of virus, or, or what are your thoughts on that, Dante? We we just did communion, as I said, I'm an elder of my church. We just did communion um, Sunday, okay, and this is right in the the you know the heat of the moment of everything going on, and so think about. You're passing the trays, has the little cup of juice, has the the bread that everybody grabs with their hand. And so this time around, yes, we still pass the trays, but instead of having people take the bread, you know, their finger grabbing the little like um, uh, uh, tablets of bread, we double cupped. So we had the the juice and then under the under the juice was another cup with the bread. And obviously, you know, we're looking, we're keen, we're making sure somebody doesn't have a snot rag, Kleenex coughing. And the other thing too is, is being a responsible citizen. So if you're not feeling well, you know, you're coughing, you, 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 you have something that's not even related to coronavirus, but you're sick, you know, in any situation. And I don't know if you've been brought up this way or not. If you have a fever, if you have a, a cough, you have a cold, don't go to a public venue. Stay home. If you're normal, you know, use precautionary measures. You know, if you go into a public place, you're putting your hands all over, you know, chairs, over railings, you're touching things. Make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly. A good way to make sure, what do you mean I'm washing my hands? You know, do the ABCDs or the happy birthday song twice while you're washing your hands to make sure that you're fully, you're, you're fully um, prepared and that uh, you, you, you're, you're covered in that aspect. So I would sit there and say, no, don't panic to that extent. Now it's different if all of a sudden, you know, you find out, okay, there's a outbreak of coronavirus in my church. I would think then the church would take the situation of saying, Now we need to, um, okay, maybe close the service and do an online network just to make sure that we're not spreading. So if if it hasn't, use common sense. You know, if you're not feeling well, stay home. Don't be a part of the problem. You know, and that's all I'm saying is you be, you know, use discernment, use a little bit of wisdom, think like a fox and and just make sure that you're, you're checking your environment. Somebody doesn't look like they have a fever or they're not feeling well and always be thorough. I mean, ways to be, you know, good health measures, wash and sanitize your hands frequently, Um, drink plenty of water, stay active, get sleep, get your vitamin D all good for your immune response system. Practice social distancing. So in large groups, make sure that you're not on top of each other, you know, riding in close quarters on an L train or train station. You know, if it gets worse, um, you know, if you have, if you got kids, practice a snap game. 
So this is a really good one. So if you snap, uh, they stick their hands in their mouth, their eyes, their nose, or touch something in public, snap and, and play this game with them to sit there and say, you know, look how often you're touching your eyes, your face, your nose, and then you're touching something else. Mm-hmm. And so put that in perspective of, you know, even do that game with yourself. When I go to church, when I go to work, when I go that, am I doing the, the snap game? Okay. Am I touching my face? And now am I touching something different? Just be, you know, be above reproach in how you handle these things that you can become um, at risk with. Yeah. And, and I'll just to, to wrap this thing up and kind of, kind of sign off here. I'll just tell you guys, I mean, the reality is, yeah, are we dealing with this and we've dealt with stuff like this in the past. And I think we live in an age now of, of mass media and social media. So this is, um, exacerbating the situation and causing a little bit more fear and panic than we probably need. The reality is I'll tell you right now. And, and, you know, we kind of joked about this. If you looked at the, at the statistics, um, you know, and, and, and Dante brought this up. I, I, I put up a, a CDC or is actually a FEMA map. And mm-hmm. from an emergency management standpoint, we look at, um, if, whenever there's a situation, if there's going to be a, a pandemic, an outbreak, um, social unrest, anything like that, obviously your major cities, your major urban areas are going to be the highest, uh, at risk for that. So yeah, does that mean you pack up and move to Idaho? Well, not necessarily because a lot of people have jobs and they, they can't, you know, necessarily pack up and leave. Um, but you know, we, we need to look at that and, and look at, uh, the situation and, and the situation is okay. You're going to see, a greater number of cases inside places like Seattle, inside places like San Francisco or New York because of the population there. Um, and, uh, the reality of this is, is that most likely every single state, this, this virus is in every single state. It's contagious. It's being spread right now. But the reality is most people are not going to have a reaction to it. Or if they do have a reaction, it's going to be, uh, you're going to have some minor symptoms. And then those symptoms, uh, are, are gonna, you know, you're gonna feel like it's a cold or something like that, but your body will fight it off like it would any other virus or flu or things like that. Um, again, the ones that you need to worry about, uh, your, your elderly population, uh, people that may have, uh, some sort of, uh, degraded immune system or maybe something like, uh, COPD or respiratory illness and something like that. Those are some things like, okay, if I'm, if I'm in that boat, maybe I want to think about, you know, uh, of staying home or again, maybe not going out into public places because I'm more susceptible uh, to to the virus. But for the vast majority of us, 90, I would say 95% of us or more, we're not going to be affected by this at all. Um, so uh, just, you know, put put some stock in that. And, and uh, you know, to, to bring it back to a biblical point, Dante, again, we know who our Savior is. We know that that God will never leave us or abandon us. And this is just one of those things that we're, we're dealing with as, uh, as a society. Uh, we've dealt with this many, many, many times throughout history. And uh, and God has got us through, and we need to just take stock in that. And I, I look at that as, you know, I know who my Maker is, I know who my Savior is, and so I don't live in fear. Um, I'm not ignorant. I don't uh, just you know throw cars into the wind and, and do whatever. But I also put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and knowing that uh, my God's going to protect me and get me through these things. So uh, and we he need has a plan, and He has a time for everything, and and that's the thing is. You know, greater is he than, you know, who is in me than is in the world. And I mean, we have God on our side. And so, you know, if he wants us home, we'll be home. And the idea is that you you have to trust in him. You have to trust in who God made you to be and not to trust, you know, the culture. If we're looking, you know, in so many different podcasts from education to raising your kids to how we do it, if we look for the culture to guide us. We're immediately into trouble. But if we take biblical principle, biblical lens, and we re- react accordingly, and okay, if we're ill prepared for such a thing or such a time as this, next time, because there will be a next time, let's make it an effort to be more prepared. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, guys, as always, I want to say thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, thanks for, for tuning in this special podcast. We just uh, said, you know, we, Dante and I said we should probably do this and just uh, – uh, give you guys an update and let you guys know what's going on and hopefully give you guys some, not only some peace of mind, but also, uh, you know, things to look out for and prepare for for your family in the future. Um, but we want to say as always, guys, we thank you so much for your support. Thank you guys for, uh, all your, uh, subscriptions and all your great five star reviews. Uh, you can please hit the subscribe button. You can get us on iTunes. 
uh, Spotify and Pandora. And then you can also get us on social media on Instagram and the closed Facebook group. Um, and we'll put this up there. If you guys want to have more of a discussion on some of this stuff in the closed Facebook group, we'll put it up there so you guys can uh, some ask, ask some questions or uh, just talk about some different things we can do. But uh, with that, guys, we want to say, as always, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. We're praying for you guys. Take care. Be safe out there, guys. And God bless. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Legacy Dads Podcast with Lance and Dante, real men, authentic faith. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit LegacyDads.org and on Facebook.com slash Legacy Dads and on Twitter at Legacy underscore Dad. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe and we'll catch you next time on the Legacy Dads Podcast, real men, authentic faith.